Welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and today we're going to do things a little differently. We're going to work on the in love with color afghan. Now there are four different motifs that are available for this particular afghan and on screen you'll see a sample of each one of the four. You'll also see the counts on how many that are available for each. Now what you need to do, you can either just stay with me right now and just hear my intro so that you have the ins and outs of this afghan or if you know what you're doing you can just click the motif right now to continue to that particular one. So let's uh, go through the ins and outs first. Now throughout this afghan you're going to be using 11 different colors and the designer has come up with the color combinations in order to match what you see in the beginning picture. What you need to do is that you need to pick out 11 colors and you can either follow the designer's design or you can just come up with your own color combinations. That is really completely up to you. Now you will notice that the designer if you really look carefully the designer was very strategic on where the white was placed. I have to say I really like that. That's what makes this afghan so amazing. In my particular sample that I'm working on right now is that I decided to ignore those but I have to say I think that the designer was absolutely right and just watch where that white goes on these motifs because I think it makes a world of difference. So in this uh, tutorial you will need to do 14 of these octagon shapes. You'll have to do these are the middle squares. There's only six of them to do. They go relatively quickly and then you'll have to do 20 triangles and then uh, four different corner pieces and the four corner pieces look like this. They don't look like corners do they? But they actually in fact just uh, go up to a corner. So if you put it up like this they just sit in like that. So they kind of look weird but they actually work out really well. Now I really struggle with that element of this pattern because I was not thinking linear. I was think I wasn't thinking angles. So when I have to say when I was doing this I was really confused. But today I'm going to try to take out some of the mystery when it comes to this particular project and I think you're going to love this. I'm on day two of this and I'm almost done my afghan. That's how fast this whole thing is gone. And I also have to tell you one more tip before I begin today's tutorials. In both the octagon and squares you will notice that the centers are absolutely identical. And do you see that there? So do you see the green here on this one and then the gray on this one? The, the middles are absolutely identical. So it's when we start moving up. So the orange has changed here. The burgundy over here is different and then that's when it changes the shape from going from octagon to square. So in today's tutorial what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be showing you how to do each one of these motifs and let's start off with the octagon because it's a lot of fun and then we'll move along to the square and to the next ones after that. So let's begin. I'm going to be using Red Heart with Love just like it suggests but you can also use Red Heart Super Saver for this. Let's uh, create a slip knot. You're going to need a size J or a 6.0 millimeter crochet hook. Let's start off with the slip knot. We are going to do the very center first and let's begin. So we're just going to just chain four. So one, two, three and four. Let's create a ring. So to do that we're going to stick the hook into the be beginning chain and then just grab the yarn and pull through and that has your first ring. So let's uh, begin and we are going to chain three. So one, two and three and we are going to do clustering all the way around. So let's read the instructions. It says chain three counts as a double crochet here and throughout. Double crochet into the ring. So let's do that first. So we're double crocheting into the ring. So just hang on. Just don't get too fancy here. I want you to chain one first and then let's go over the instructions. So it says to chain uh, double crochet in the ring which I just did. It says count as a first a cluster. So these two are working together when it comes to this particular pattern. We've chained one and now we're going to cluster and chain one and we're going to do that seven times. To do the cluster you'll see the special abbreviations and here's how it works is that we're going to begin to double crochet in to the center of the ring. Pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Just pull through two and hold that. We're going to be putting two double crochets together to make a cluster. So let's wrap the yarn again going into the center. Pull through. Pull through two and now you have three loops on your hook. Grab the yarn and pull through all three. And so these are now one cluster. We have to have a total of eight of these going all the way around. So in between the clusters we're always going to chain one. So let's do another cluster. So we're going to wrap going in. Okay. Pull through two and hold. Wrap and in. Pull through. Pull through two and hold. You now have three on your hook. So pull through all three. Chain one. So let's speed up. So we're just going to cluster our way all the way around. 
Now you're thinking why was there eight? Well there's eight sides to um, this particular uh, octagon. If you are doing the square at this particular moment, uh, this also counts. So we're going to be able to transfer this into an octagon or a square later on as we work our way through the rounds. So you just have to look at the cluster. So you can just go one, two, three, four, five, six. So I would do that. You need to make sure you have eight. So you don't want to lose count. Just make sure you can identify what the clusters look like. and you will notice that they'll all want to stay together. So let's try it again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And after you've done the last cluster, simply just chain one and let slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three. So that be ends that. So this color is now completely done. This is the only time I'm going to show you how to change the color. Uh, so what I'm just going to do is that I'm just going to wrap the yarn around the hook and pull through that loop and like that. And all I want to do is that I would just want to feed this in and out of a few of the stitches, maybe about an inch or so. And this will guarantee that your um, end will never follow. So I'm just going in and out of the stitches because what will happen in the next row is that when you're going to wrap around, it's going to get stuck in between because it's going to start grabbing and pulling. And that's exactly what you need. Now I like to trim my tails as I go. On this I've had a whack of tails because we're always changing colors. And um, the color changing, some people just don't like to do it all the time. This afghan is totally worth it. So I've just changed my, uh, trim my colors. I'm just checking and voila, this is done. So let's move along to the next round. So let's begin our next round and simply it says with the right side. So this is how we've just been going around. So the side that's facing you is the right side. This is the wrong side. You will notice that it has a slight bowl shape to it and therefore the underside of the bowl is the wrong side. The one that's curling and going sinking down as if it's going to hold your cereal is the right side. So that hopefully that helps you. So I'm going to create a slip knot first. It says to fasten on the yarn and um, let's begin to do that. So with the right side facing it says join any, uh, join the color in the next chain one space. Well the chain one spaces are existing between the clusters. So it doesn't matter which cluster that you get as long as you're in between. So you don't want to go in between one, one cluster itself but you want to go in between two. So let's uh, begin. I'm just going to slip my hook into the gap, pull through and pull through this like this. And I want to put my straggler down on top of the line so I can get it trapped into position. It says chain three, sorry, it says chain three, mm -hmm. one, two, and three. And it says double crochet, chain one, and then cluster into the same chain one space. So we're going to do another cluster. So we're going to uh, double crochet first. And so the chain three and the first double crochet act as one cluster. Then we are going to chain one and we're going to start clustering into the same one in between. So in actual fact in between each one of these clusters are going to have two clusters in this round. So to do a cluster we wrapped and pulled through and, hold and held it like this. Okay and so we do not want to chain one in between joining the two clusters together. So when they're in, to in there together, so if the two clusters are in the same gap, there's a chain one that separates them but when we go to switch to the next cluster, we don't want to chain one first. We just want to simply just cluster right into it. So let's just go into the next gapping space. Okay and do a cluster. Okay and then chain one because we're into the same space down here and do another cluster. So each one is going to have two clusters. Okay. So we're going to see how I'm just dragging this along. This is how these um, hi, um, tails are going to get hidden into your work so that you'll never see them. And I just want you to simply just put two clusters with the chain one in between each one of these here. So there should be a total of 16 clusters all together and you will see that the eight of these will start really popping out. So please do that when we meet back up. We're just going to change color and move along to the next round. When you get back all the way around you'll have your final two clusters in and because remember we don't chain one when we're going from one cluster to another when we're skipping over the bottom. We just simply go into the beginning chain top of the beginning of chain three and just slip stitch it and simply just cut your yarn now and just weave in the ends like I showed you already and then we're going to move on to round number three next. 
So let's begin round number three. Regardless if you're working on the octagon or square, round three is the final round for both of them. So let's uh, begin and what I need you to do is identify which clusters are together so that these two are together and then we wanna identify the space in between where they're together. So we don't want to separate it like this where they're jumping across here. We wanna make sure that they're together at the bottom and so that there's a gap right there. So let's uh, just attach our yarn one more time here. And I simply just want you to stick your hook into this gapping space where they're joining underneath. And we're going to attach our yarn. So we're just gonna wrap it around and through. Let's leave this straggler down on top like I showed you before. And now we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. You're going to love this round. This round makes it look like a flower when you're done. So let's begin. We're gonna do four double crochets. Keep this straggler down on top so that you can trap it underneath as you go. And so that was one, two, three, and four. So with the chaining three, that actually counts as five. So chaining a three, one, two, three, four. So that's five. So just remember that because in the next part, it's gonna make total sense. Now where they're joining together, so right, see how they're leaning together? They're two separate clusters. That's the gap that it wants you to put in a single crochet. So you go right into the gap itself like this and I'm gonna move that straggler in behind now. And so we go to the next space. So the clusters are together and we wanna go in that space and we wanna do five more double crochets. So that was two, three, four, and five just like so. And so then we just look, okay, these clusters are together, these clusters are together, but they're not working together in the same bottom. So that's where you're going to single crochet. So please do that all the way around. So you're just gonna look for where they're, right there, the gapping where they're joining. Okay, and you put five, and then once you do that, then you look for the next space available and then put in a single crochet and do that all the way around. You'll end up with like really cool flower petals as you're finishing off this round. So I'll meet you back in just a moment. So I've just come all the way back around and simply we just have to make sure we do our single crochet into the very between the last one there and then we're just going to join with the slip stitch at the top of the beginning chain of three. And as I promised you this looks like a really cool flower coaster idea. Mm -hmm, that's what I'm talking about. So I want you to fasten this off please and let's get our next color ready and make sure you weave in your tails. Okay, let's carry on and continue doing the octagon shape. So this is where the square and the octagon separate at this particular point. So we're going on round number four of the octagon itself and let's begin our next color. So this is really, really simple as well. So we're gonna be working in the back loops only because if you notice on the original one that we're doing is that you'll see a line going around. This is as a result of the back loops. It's the only time we're ever doing it. I know a lot of people don't like back loops but this is one of those elements where back loops are really kind of cool and looks fabulous. So now we need to look for the five. So it doesn't matter which petal. You should have eight here. If one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. If you have more than eight or less than eight, it means that something is wrong already in below, uh, in the rounds below. So let's uh, look at the five and go to the middle one. So you can just either count one, two, three, or one, two, three, doesn't matter. It's the middle one and you're going to go into the back loop only to join your yarn. So let's join it and we're going to uh, chain one and then single crochet into that same joining spot like this. And I want you to take this straggler and just kind of keep charge of it. So the next uh, rows that we need to do is that you see how it goes up and down like uh, I was gonna say up and down like a toilet seat but it's going up and down on the petals. We need to compensate for that on this and this is what we're going to do and every petal is the same. So watch. So the first one is going to do um, we're gonna do half double crochet. So just wrapping through. The next one we are going to do double crochet like this. And then what we have is that we're gonna start doing some trebling uh, there. So what we're going to do is two single, uh, two tubbers into the single crochet and then double into the next and etc. etc. So right in the very bottom one right here, okay, in the, in the back loop, we're going to wrap and wrap. We're gonna do a treble and we're gonna go into the back loop and we're gonna do two trebles in there. And this signifies a turning corner of 
of the octagon. So let's do it one more time. So every time we're doing these trebles we're actually in fact creating one of the sides uh, corners there. So now we're gonna go start and work our way back up the pedal. So it's gonna come back up. So to do that back loop again and we're just going to double crochet. Okay we're coming back closer to the top so we're now gonna half double crochet. I'm gonna let that straggler fall in behind now because it's in. And then I'm at the very top one again and I'm just going to single crochet. So that's how you do one whole thing. So you can see that it, it's going up and down and it's maintaining that to maintain this pattern. So let's uh, just review this one more time. So the next one is a half double crochet because we're starting to work our way down. Okay so half double crochet. The next one is double crochet and we're back into this piece right here. The, this is the single crochet in the row below and we are going to treble twice. And like this. So the difference between the square and the octagon is that this is creating corners um, at to have the eight sides of the octagon where in the square the way that we do it is that in actual fact it's gonna not, it's gonna end up being square because it's not exactly the same that what we're doing right now. So now we're gonna work our way going back up. Okay. So to do that we're just going to double crochet first. We're going to half double crochet and single crochet. Please do that same repeating going all the way around and when we come back we'll fasten off and move along to the next round. When you get all the way back around you're gonna be coming up the slope and we have a single crochet. That means that in the last two trebles that are together we're going to do a double crochet first and then a half double crochet like so and then what we're going to do is just slip stitch it to the beginning of there. So that's what you would have for this particular round. Please fasten this off. Let's get our next color all ready and let's go. So let's begin rounds five and six. Five and six have the same color. They're white and I mentioned in the introduction that the designer has really thought this out that if you really looked at the photo that you'll see that white is consistent on the same rounds for each one of the um, octagons as well as the squares and I really think this is what makes the charm of this one. So I'm gonna just honor her uh, color line and put white. These colors I just put in whatever. So that's just up to you but I think the white is really uh, something that you do need. So let's uh, begin. We are going to just create a slip knot and we are just going to begin to start now. So to begin round five I need you to look at one of the corners. You'll see that the octagon shape is actually taking effect now because of the last round and right where the two trebles are together I want you to stick your hook in the gap of there and we're just gonna begin. It doesn't matter which treble that you pick. Um, which side to just pick one. So we're just gonna fasten the yarn just like this and we're going to chain one and single crochet. So I'm just gonna put the straggler down in. Now don't worry about this straggler. I'm gonna single crochet right now but don't worry about the straggler here because we're just gonna leave that out because in the next round we're gonna trap it into position. To begin now we are gonna work within the tops of each one of the petals that you see and we're also gonna be working in the corners. This round is so simple. So let's begin. So we're gonna chain three. So one, two and three and look for the single crochet. So you'll see trebles, doubles, half, single, half, double and treble. So look for the single and don't go into the stitch right there. Go underneath exactly where that other one is. This hides it. This is what creates this charm and I need you to do a double crochet there. So just going right underneath there and do a double crochet. So what this does is it see how it blocks the blue from making it look like it goes all the way around. It's just one of those techniques that is really cool. So one, two, three chain and I want you to come to the next treble and just separate them. There's two of them. Go right into the middle for a single crochet. So each one of the corners is always gonna get um, a single uh, and then we're gonna chain three, one, two, three. Look for the next single crochet. So here's your two trebles, your half, double, single. Okay so look for the single and double right underneath it. And then chain three, one, two and three. You're into the next corner. Split your trebles out, single crochet, one, two, three. Look for the singles 
and once you get doing these you can just identify and just speed your way along. So one, two, two and three. So essentially what's happening is that when you single crochet in up here because this is somewhat sinking down you can see that it's kind of pulling down and that's what makes it really quite charming. So continue that same pattern going all the way around. So I'm coming all the way back around. Please chain three before going all the way to the end and just slip stitch it to the top of the beginning. And I do not want you to fasten off this yarn. We're gonna do two rounds of the same color. So rather, if you're gonna do white, great. If not, it, you still don't wanna change the color. This is one of those uh, rounds that you really do need two working together. So to begin round number six, we're just gonna slip stitch in like this. And so we're just coming into the gap and pulling it through. So that just kind of moves us over just like you see. So we're now going to chain three. So one, two and three and it says to three double crochets into the same chain three space. So just th three more double crochets in there. So two and three. So with the chaining of three it actually counts as four. So one, two, three and four. So what we have to do is then chain two, one and two and then we just immediately jump over to the next chain three space and put four double crochets in there. So every time we do a group of four, we wanna chain two in between. So now that your group of four is in, we have to pay attention here because there are two different ways of chaining when it comes to this. So you can see that there's an octagon shape going on. So you see that there's a flat side, flat, and then flat coming down. So what we need to do is that when we're in between the corners, when we do this grouping of four, we have to make sure we only chain one first. And then what we have to do then is then jump immediately to the next one for four double crochets. Like that. Okay, so now we have to then, once this group of four is in, we're actually turning the corner because we're turning the corner on the row below and we're chaining two, one and two. And then we come into the next chain three space for another four. So this is one of those ones you really do need to pay attention on this round to make sure you get your chains right. So we know that we just finished a corner. We know this is a flat space in between. So therefore we have to chain one only and then do the next group of four before moving along. So now that this group of four is now done, we chain, we're gonna turn the corner, so that means we're gonna chain two. We can see that we're changing our corner down here. If you really look at it and then go for the next four. So we'll repeat that pattern all the way around and we'll meet you back up in just a moment. So when we come all the way back around, what's gonna happen is that you're actually joining. See how you can see it's a turn. Therefore, when you have your last group, you wanna make sure you chain two, one and two, and then slip stitch it to the top of the beginning. Uh, chain three to fasten off. So let's fasten off this yarn. We have only one more round to go. The next round, I have to say, is the round that's gonna boggle your mind. Um, it's worth it. You just have to wrap your head around it. So fasten this off and I'll meet you back up and we'll try to work on the secrets together to make it really easy for you. So we're now about to start the final round and this is uh, the final round is number seven and I found this one to be very complicated but once I really kind of bring my brain around it I can actually really get it good and then <laughs> it became really easy. It's just a matter of trying to decipher a lot of words but unfortunately you need a, those in order to describe it. So what I want you to look at is that you can see the octagon shape. Put the flat on top. Doesn't matter where we're gonna join. You have the sides going all the way around but keep the flat on top. And so I was really confused by the instructions and not because they're not hard. It's just I couldn't visualize it. So what I've done here is that the black here is the line that is below. Okay, so here's the white here and this is what it would represent if you're doing crochet diagrams. So you have your chaining of two here and then you have your four. You have your chain one, four and then you're chaining two as you're turning the corner and going back down. So in this round, which is represented by red, is that we're gonna start chaining at three. So one, two, and three. And we're gonna put two to, uh, one double crochet in each of the first two. Then we are going to chain one, skip this one, and for the next three, they're gonna be three double crochets. So it's gonna be this one, the gapping space of chaining one, and then this one. So you can see that there's two, three, and two. So then once we get beyond this, we're gonna chain one, we're gonna skip one, and then the final two here 
are going to get one double crochet each and then we immediately come and start doing the corner and each one of the corners a double crochet, chain two and double crochet. So when we get back and we're going to, we're going to do the same thing for every flat edge going around. When you come back this here the chaining of three represents one of the double crochets. So we're just gonna put in a double crochet, chaining two and then slip stitch it to the top. So let's uh, begin to do that next. So to begin let's attach our yarn and we're just gonna create a slip knot the same way we have been doing and we wanna make sure that we're gonna grab it in a chain two space which is a corner. So you can really clearly see the blue here is the corner. So let's uh, begin to do that next and put our yarn and attach it like that. Okay so let's chain three as it asks you to do. So one, two and three and so the first two double crochets are going to get a double crochet each. Now make before I do that make sure that the straggler is down on top so that you can hide that so it doesn't fall out on you and so then the first two double crochets are in. So one and two and as per my diagram I just showed you is that we're going to chain one. Okay we're going to skip this one and go to the next one for a double crochet. Okay and then we're gonna double crochet right into this gapping space. That's the chain one space and then double crochet into the first one. And then we're going to chain one, skip one and double crochet one into the final in each of the final two. Just like that. So it matches exactly what I've drawn out for you and we this is the next corner so we're going to double crochet, chain two and double crochet like so. So let's show me, let's show you one more time. So the first one, the first two are gonna be double crochets each. One and two. We're going to chain one. We're gonna skip one and go to the last one that's available. We're gonna go to the chain one space for a double crochet. We're gonna go to the next one that's available which is the first. So that you have your, you almost see, you can see you have your groups of three. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Can I tell you a secret? The square is very similar on the final of how you're completing this as well. So if that helps you. So we're gonna chain one and then we're just gonna skip one and uh, put a double crochet into each of the final two. Okay and we are just on the next corner. And so that's double crochet, chain two, double crochet. So continue that same pattern going all the way around with we'll me back up. You're gonna fasten off and then this octagon is done and you just need to do 13 more. So that completes doing the octagon. If I were you this is my tip for you. I would do this all in sections. So there are 14. I always do one main sample so that I have something to reference to but in the next 13 what I would do is do all the middles first and then come back and then do all the next for and uh, for each one of the 13 and then continue. I'm an assembly line person so basically once you read the instructions you can read it once or twice and then all of a sudden you can just bang these all out really quickly by doing each round and it will give you really good color control as well. So in the next part of this tutorial let's move along. We're gonna start doing the square next and uh, when we come back we'll have, we'll begin that right away. So let's begin. I'm gonna be using Red Heart with Love just like it suggests but you can also use Red Heart Super Saver for this. Let's uh, create a slip knot. You're gonna need a size J or a 6.0 millimeter crochet hook. Let's start off with the slip knot. We are going to do the very center first and let's begin. So we're just going to just chain four. So one, two, three and four. Let's create a ring. So to do that we're gonna stick the hook into the beginning chain and then just grab the yarn and pull through and that has your first ring. So let's uh, begin and we are going to chain three. So one, two and three and we are going to do clustering all the way around. So let's read the instructions. It says chain three counts as a double crochet here and throughout. Double crochet into the ring. So let's do that first. So we're double crocheting into the ring. So just hang on. Just don't get too fancy here. I want you to chain one first and then let's go over the instructions. So it says to chain, uh, double crochet in the ring which I just did. It says count as a first a cluster. So these two are working together when it comes to this particular pattern. We've chained one and now we're going to cluster and chain one and we're gonna do that seven times. To do the cluster you'll see the special abbreviations and here's how it works is that we're going to begin to double crochet in, 
to the center of the ring. Pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Just pull through two and hold that. We're gonna be putting two double crochets together to make a cluster. So let's wrap the yarn again going into the center. Pull through. Pull through two and now you have three loops on your hook. Grab the yarn and pull through all three. And so these are now one cluster. We have to have a total of eight of these going all the way around. So in between the clusters we're always gonna chain one. So let's do another cluster. So we're gonna wrap going in. Okay, pull through two and hold. Wrap and in, pull through. Pull through two and hold. You now have three on your hook. So pull through all three, chain one. So let's speed up. So we're just gonna cluster our way all the way around. Now you're thinking why was there eight? Well there's eight sides to um, this particular uh, octagon. If you are doing the square at this particular moment, uh, this also counts. So we're going to be able to transfer this into an octagon or a square later on as we work our way through the rounds. So you just have to look at the cluster. So you can just go one, two, three, four, five, six. So I would do that. You need to make sure you have eight. So you don't want to lose count. Just make sure you can identify what the clusters look like. and you will notice that they'll all want to stay together. So let's try it again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And after you've done the last cluster, simply just chain one and let slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three. So that be ends that. So this color is now completely done. This is the only time I'm gonna show you how to change the color. Uh, so what I'm just going to do is that I'm just gonna wrap the yarn around the hook and pull through that loop and like that. And all I want to do is that I would just want to feed this in and out of a few of the stitches, maybe about an inch or so. And this will guarantee that your um, end will never follow. So I'm just going in and out of the stitches. Because what will happen in the next row is that when you're going to wrap around, it's gonna get stuck in between because it's gonna start grabbing and pulling. And that's exactly what you need. Now I like to trim my tails as I go. On this I've had a whack of tails because we're always changing colors. And um, the color changing, some people just don't like to do it all the time. This afghan is totally worth it. So I've just changed my, uh, trimmed my colors. I'm just checking and voila, this is done. So let's move along to the next round. So let's begin our next round and simply it says with the right side. So this is how we've just been going around. So the side that's facing you is the right side. This is the wrong side. You will notice that it has a slight bowl shape to it and therefore the underside of the bowl is the wrong side. The one that's curling and going sinking down as if it's gonna hold your cereal is the right side. So that hopefully that helps you. So I'm gonna create a slip knot first. It says to fasten on the yarn and um, let's begin to do that. So. With the right side facing it says join any, uh, join the color in the next chain one space. Well the chain one spaces are existing between the clusters. So it doesn't matter which cluster that you get as long as you're in between. So you don't want to go in between one, one cluster itself but you want to go in between two. So let's uh, begin. I'm just going to slip my hook into the gap, pull through and pull through this like this. And I wanna put my straggler down on top of the line so I can get it trapped into position. It says chain three, sorry, it says chain three, mm -hmm. one, two, and three. And it says double crochet, chain one, and then cluster into the same chain one space. So we're gonna do another cluster. So we're gonna uh, double crochet first. And so the chain three and the first double crochet act as one cluster. Then we are going to chain one and we're gonna start clustering into the same one in between. So in actual fact in between each one of these clusters are gonna have two clusters in this round. So to do a cluster we wrapped and pulled through and, hold and held it like this. Okay and so we do not wanna chain one in between joining the two clusters together. So when they're in, to, in there together, so if the two clusters are in the same gap, there's a chain one that separates them but when we go to switch to the next cluster, we don't want to chain one first. We just wanna simply just cluster right into it. So let's just go into the next gapping space. Okay, and do a cluster. Okay, and then chain one because we're into the same space down here and do another cluster. So each one is gonna have two clusters. Okay, so we're gonna see how I'm just dragging this along. This is how these um, 
um, tails are gonna get hidden into your work so that you'll never see them. And I just want you to simply just put two clusters with the chain one in between each one of these here. So there should be a total of 16 clusters all together and you will see that the eight of these will start really popping out. So please do that when we meet back up. We're just gonna change color and move along to the next round. When you get back all the way around you'll have your final two clusters in and because remember we don't chain one when we're going from one cluster to another when we're skipping over the bottom we just simply go into the beginning chain top of the beginning of chain three and just slip stitch it and simply just cut your yarn now and just weave in the ends like I showed you already and then we're gonna move on to round number three next. So let's begin round number three. Regardless if you're working on the octagon or square, round three is the final round for both of them. So let's uh, begin and what I need you to do is identify which clusters are together so that these two are together and then we wanna identify the space in between where they're together. So we don't want to separate it like this where they're jumping across here. We wanna make sure that they're together at the bottom and so that there's a gap right there. So let's uh, just attach our yarn one more time here. And I simply just want you to stick your hook into this gapping space where they're joining underneath. And we're going to attach our yarn. So we're just gonna wrap it around and through. Let's leave this straggler down on top like I showed you before. And now we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. You're going to love this round. This round makes it look like a flower when you're done. So let's begin. We're gonna do four double crochets. Keep this straggler down on top so that you can trap it underneath as you go and so that was one, two, three and four. So with the chaining three that actually counts as five. So chaining a three, one, two, three, four. So that's five. So just remember that because in the next part it's gonna make total sense. Now where they're joining together, so right, see how they're leaning together? They're two separate clusters. That's the gap that it wants you to put in a single crochet. So you go right into the gap itself like this and I'm gonna move that straggler in behind now. And so we go to the next space. So the clusters are together and we wanna go in that space and we wanna do five more double crochets. So that was two, three, four and five just like so and so then we just look okay these clusters are together these clusters are together but they're not working together in the same bottom so that's where you're going to single crochet. So please do that all the way around so you're just gonna look for where they're right there the gapping where they're joining okay and you put five and then once you do that then you look for the next space available and then put in a single crochet and do that all the way around. You'll end up with like really cool flower petals as you're finishing off this round. So I'll meet you back in just a moment. So I've just come all the way back around and simply we just have to make sure we do our single crochet into the very between the last one there and then we're just going to join with the slip stitch at the top of the beginning chain of three. And as I promised you this looks like a really cool flower coaster idea. Mm -hmm, that's what I'm talking about. So I want you to fasten this off please and let's get our next color ready and make sure you weave in your tails. So we're now gonna transform this into a square. We have been following the square and octagon up into this and this is round number th one, two and three. This is round number four now of the square and this is when we start transferring it to look like a square. So what's happened in, in the octagon, there are eight different petals here so therefore we confirmed it and we made eight different sides. This time what we need to do is that we need to look at the petals from a flat point of view. So flat, flat and flat. So what I need you to do is that I need you to grab your yarn and we're going to start and we're gonna start transforming that. So we're just gonna put on our slip knot and again like we were working on the octagon, this one here we wanna work in the back loops only to create that flower that appears in the front. So what we need to do is that look at the groups of five, one, two, three, four, five. Either count one, two, three over or one, two, three over. It doesn't matter as long as it's the middle. Just slip into the back. Okay, the back loop only and join your yarn just like this. And what we need to do at this particular point is that we need to begin to transform this. So let's uh, begin. We're going to going into the same stitch. We're just going to single crochet. 
and we need to single crochet two more times into the next two into the back loop. So let's do that again. So single crochet and then the next one single crochet and now you should end up in the middle of these. See where it's coming down? So we still working in the back loops. I want you to half double crochet there. Just like you see. And what this is doing is it's allowing it to sink a little bit in order to compensate for that. So what we have to do at this point is that we start building up on the other side. So what we're going to do is three single crochets next. One, okay, and then two, okay, and three. And you're back on the middle of the petal. So now we have to start creating the corner. The corner is gonna fill in this entire gapping space and this is like we've done the corner already in the very last octagon. So let's do that right next. Like we did in the octagon, we have to build up. See how it's sinking down but we're also gonna be creating a point. So we have to be able to start building it. So we're at the top of the petal. We've come along. You can see it's flat already. And so we have to then half double crochet into the first because we're compensating it for sinking back down. We are going to double crochet into the next and we're back at the very bottom in between. Okay, you see how it's coming in between? We are going to treble into there. So let's treble and then chain two. One and two and treble back into that same spot. This is the corner. Just like you see. Okay, so we have to compensate and reverse exactly what we've done here. So we've sunk down. Now we're coming back up this side. So the next one in the back loop is, is a double crochet. The next one is a half double. Okay, and now the next one is a single. So we're now in the top of the loop. So like you see it flat here, okay, we need to compensate and go flat from all the way across. So the next two are single crochets. One and two. And this is the middle. So it's sinking down a little bit. So we're gonna put a half double crochet there to compensate. Okay, and the next three are going to be single crochets to take you back to the top of the next petal. Like this. So now we're ready to do the next corner. So let's start. We're gonna do a half double crochet. The next one is gonna be a double crochet because we're, bu we're building up. The next one is the right one in between and we're going to treble. Let me try that again. So wrap and wrap. Okay, one and two. And we're, that was chaining a two, trebling back into the same one to create that point right there. So let's build back up because the, the petal is coming back up and so that the next one is a double. The next one is a half double and the next one is a single. And so we're back in the middle top again. So continue to do that same uh, um, stitch going all the way around. Just follow that and all of a sudden you're, you're now this beautiful is now turning into a square. We're coming all the way back around and the final will be a corner. So I've already put my first treble in there. Let's chain two. Put my second treble into the same spot to finalize this corner. And this is the single cro crochet at the top. <coughs> <coughs> this is the single crochet at the top. So we need to build ourselves back up. So we've just put in our two trebles. So therefore we have a double crochet left and then a half double and then we're back here. So we know that our stitch counts are proper as we come back around. Like so. So once you have your half double in there, just immediately just slip stitch and finalize this. So please fasten this off. We're gonna get our next color ready and now it just really gets easy from this point forward. In round number six, we're now gonna start bringing in the traditional look of a granny square. So just like we see here, we have nice flat edges right now. It's kind of like a solid granny right now but we still want to begin to transform it so that it can do a regular granny square look just like you see. So in this round here, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be starting off in the corner and then we're going to be putting on three skipping one, skipping or like chaining one, skipping one and we're just putting in three groups, three in this entire round. So we're gonna do one, two, three, 
come back to the corner. And what this is going to do for the next two rounds is that it's gonna start creating the gaps that you need to do to make it really really easy to complete this entire process. So let's begin round number five and really easy here. We're just gonna attach our yarn to a corner. Any corner doesn't matter and we're just gonna bring it on alignment and then chain three. One, two and three. Leave your straggler down on top so that you can bury it in as you go. Two double crochets going in. This is one half of a corner. You have to remember that when we come back around we have to finish this corner. We now want to chain one and we're just immediately going to skip the first double crochet. Go to the second and I'm just gonna put that there and just three double crochets in a row. One, two and three. Just like you see. So now we're going to chain one and we're gonna skip the next one and three double crochets again. One, two and three. We're now going to chain one and skip one, three double crochets in again. So one, two and three. Okay, we want to chain one and then begin doing the corner. So you can see that you missed the first one over here. You have one left here which is fine because you're gonna, you're skipping that and you're just immediately gonna do your corner. So it's three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets and you wanna repeat that same configuration going all the way around. So one and two, three double crochets again. So I'll review that one more time in just a second. To review again, we're going to begin by chaining one. We're going to skip the first one, go to the second and do three double crochets in a row. We're going to chain one, skip one, go to the second over for three more double crochets in a row. These double crochets should be right in between the petals if you really look in carefully if that helps you visualize anything. Okay, we're chaining one and then skipping one and then three double crochets again. Okay, chaining one. Okay, and then we just have the last one there that we're skipping. We're immediately gonna do the corner. So three double crochets, uh, two chain, three double crochet right into the corner and continue to do that all the way around and when we come back we'll fasten off and start the next round. When you get all the way back around you're just going to continue along and in the final corner you'll do three double crochets chaining two and then slip stitching it together and then fastening off. I was so excited I forgot to film it. <laughs> so let's uh, begin. We're gonna start off in a corner and th the next two rounds are the final two rounds of this particular uh, of motif and they're really quite simple. So we're just going to join it in any corner and like so and chain three, one, two and three. Take that straggler so we can bury it. So just keep it on top and three more double or two more double crochets there because that chaining three equals one. And then we simply just chain one and we're just going to look for the next gapping spaces. So the gapping spaces are in between. So you have this chain one space, chain one, chain one, chain one. Those are where we're gonna be working. So let's put in three double crochets into that first one. Okay, chain one, look for, the, so you have a group of three, look for the next chain one space. It's probably gonna be really obvious for you and put another three double crochets in. Okay, chain one, look for the next group of three and look for the chain one space. Goes in the chain one space. And chain one. Look for the next space. Okay, and now we're chaining one and now we're on a corner. So the corner is always gonna be the same of chaining our three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Um, I just call that, it's not a technical term but I call it the three, two, three configuration. It's just something that makes it easier for me to remember. Okay, so do that all the way around and when we come back we're gonna finalize the final round. You'll notice that these squares are not overly huge so they do go pretty quickly. 
So I'll meet you back in just a moment. When you get all the way back around, please double crochet three times into the final corner. Chain two and then slip stitch it to the beginning of the chain three, the top of the beginning of chain three. Fasten off and let's uh, do one more round of this when we come back. So let's do the final round and we just want to use another color. I'm just having fun with my colors on this entire project and I just want to come into the corner and again do exactly what we've done already in the last round. So we're just going to attach it, chain three, one, two and three and then we're just going to um, just double crochet two more times into that corner. Okay, trapping that in. Chain one and then immediately jump to the next space. So you'll see that there's writing about repeating so many steps and the re the difference is, is that there because the square has gotten bigger that there's more gapping spaces so they have to write that information out. So it makes it look very daunting when in actual fact it's really simple. So just continue to do a traditional granny square uh, idea all the way around. It's your three double crochets in, chain one, three double crochets and then in the corners so three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet and when we come back we're going to fasten off and this concludes doing the middle squares of the afghan. So now coming all the way back around I have my three in and three in the side chain of two slip stitch and fasten off and this is concludes this particular square. We're going to fasten off. When we come back we're going to start the next uh, square. This one looks weird. This one actually fits right in the corners. If you really look at this afghan there's only four of these and they're really quite simple but it's just a matter of being able to follow the pattern correctly in order to do it right. Um, this is the hardest one that I felt um, that when I was reading the instructions. So I'll try to simplify it for you so it becomes really easy to do. So let's uh, start this one when we come back. Let's begin the corner motif. The corner motif was the hardest one that I felt that I was really struggling to visualize. I really, I thought that the corner would be like a 90 degree angle here and what I wasn't thinking to myself is that when you're looking at this particular project you'll notice that these squares never, it will never sit um, like this. Okay, it'll always sit on an angle and because of that I was just really struggling to get that in my brain until I came to the realization that this thing never sits square but in actual fact sits on an angle. So what you're going to be looking at here is that we're going to be starting off but we're, we're not going all the way around. We're only going to do three quarters of the way around and then how you start here is that you're actually growing it so that it looks like it's an angle coming out like this. So it's not like 90 degrees, it's more of like a, I would say almost like a 45 degree lift just like so. So let's uh, begin to do this next and hopefully we can make it simple for you. So let's uh, begin. We're going to start off with a slip knot today. You only have to do four of these and these go relatively quickly so they won't take you much time at all. Let's uh, begin. We're going to chain four. So one, two, three and four and let's join it with the into the beginning chain to create a ring and do a slip stitch to create a ring just like you see. So it's uh, we're going to keep on the same color. So we're going to chain three. So one, two, three and then double, two, do two double crochets. <laughs> I will get that out and two double crochets in and we're going to do a corner. So it's going to be chaining two, one and two and then three double crochets in and if you know anything about granny squares that first chaining of three counts as a double crochet. That's why you have one, two and three and so you'll have three double crochets here and then chaining two because we're turning a corner and then the final three double crochets in because we're not going all the way around. So we're only going three quarters of the way around of this particular one. Just like you see. So we have, we should have three groups, one, two and three and when we come back we're going to fasten this off. I'm going to fasten this off now and when we come back we'll have the next color and there's only um, three uh, rounds for this. So this is considered number one. So let's begin round number two. Now this is an unusual thing. We never turn our work with this. So we've just come around and we stopped here. When we start round number two I just simply want you to come back to the beginning because it says to attach to the beginning of the chain, uh, top of the chain three. That means that it's like a typewriter. It wants you to go back like this and not just flip it and etc. So let's attach our yarn and this attachment and the way that we're going to do it now is very similar to what we have been doing all along. So we're going to just going to come to the top of the chain three like so and we are going to attach it. So there you go. So chain three, one, 
two and three and I want you to double crochet again into where you've just attached it. So there's gonna be two there. This is gonna cause it to grow out to have that, that 45 degree angle that we talked about. We are going to double crochet into the next one like so and then chain one. Okay, so that acts like it's beginning to create that um, granny square look. Okay, so now we're going to come into the next corner and we're going to do our three, two, three. So three double crochets and two chain into that corner speed, uh, place. So it's how, how you start and stop this round on getting that angle to grow properly. Once you get your corner done, I want you to chain one, come to the next corner like so and do three, two, three. So three double crochet, two chain and three double crochet. So here's where you need to pay attention. So just like we started off here that we had one double crochet there and then there was two in the in the beginning, we need to finish off the same way. So once you get this corner done, chain one, then what you need to do is come to the second double crochet over and put in a double crochet there and then the next one which is the end, you're gonna put two double crochets in there. And fast, please fasten this off and we're gonna do one more round and uh, it doesn't look right right now. That's what's really confusing but you have to trust in the system in order to get it to work properly. So let's uh, fasten this off and I'll come back and join another color. So this is where we've ended. So we come around and then we end it here. Just like I said before, we need to rotate this back to where you started to so that you have the top of the chain three again. So let's uh, just put, uh, create a slip knot again. Okay and slip it into the top of the beginning chain three from the row below. So there's a lot more instructions and that's because that this is getting bigger. So we're just gonna attach it and then cover it. So we're gonna chain three first. So one, two and three and I want you to choose to um, double crochet into the same space that you just attached at. See this is causing that to grow outward for that angle that you need. And now we're going to double crochet into the next one. Okay, so it starts off with two in the first stitch, one in the next, then chain one and you're gonna run into the gap below. So then you're gonna do your three double crochet in. Okay, and then we're going to chain one and this is your next corner. So it becomes really, you know, these words that the designers have to use to, to visualize. Sometimes it's easier to see it in video than it is to actually write it out and that's one of those key concepts for this uh, particular afghan is that it's easier to visualize sometimes. So we're just finishing off the corner, chaining one. Now this time before you get to the next corner there's a gap of course. So it's another three double crochets there. Chain one. You're in the next corner and you only have to do four of these so it's not like it's a, a really big deal to be quite honest with you. Okay, so then you're finishing off this corner so three double crochet, two chain, three double crochet, then chain one and you will have a gapping space. So consider these three together. So just see this group of three. This is the next gapping space. There will be three double crochet in there. Okay, chain one first. Now go to the second one over and put in a, a double crochet. Now go to the final and put in two double crochet. That's how we started. So this is gonna create that angle that you need. It doesn't look right but trust me it will work out. So I want you to fasten off and the, this is it for this particular motif. So we just finished this and this is the corner motif. So the other, the other big square is just gonna go in there and now it's time to, for us to do the triangles. Now the triangles are really easy. You will find you will spend more time changing color than you'll actually do in the stitches and you need to do 20 of these and you will see that the designer has done the color combination so that you have to do two of every color combination. Makes it quite quick and easy so you can just really bang it off really quickly. So let's begin to do the triangles next. 
Okay, we're gonna start doing the triangles next and you'll notice in the last one that we just did is that there was three groups here. So to complete the square you would need four groups. In the triangle we only have two. Now you'll notice that it doesn't look like a pure triangle. You have to put it into the afghan in order for this to take its proper shape. So it may appear to be a diamond to you. Um, it looks like a diamond a little bit to me. So you just have to put faith in it that it's gonna work because that once you have everything in a place that it will stretch just properly. So let's uh, begin to do our triangle and you will need 20 of these. And let's create a slip knot first. And we're just gonna start it like we have with everything else is that we're going to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. Coming to the beginning chain and form that ring. So just slip stitch it to form a ring. And now we're going to chain three. So one, two, and three. Coming back into the ring for two more double crochet. Okay, got that done. <laughs> and then chain two, one, and two. And back into the ring again. So one, and we're doing three more to complete this off. So we're only actually physically doing two sides of this square if it was an actual square. Okay, so I need you to fasten that off and let's uh, carry on in just a moment. I'll bring on some new yarn. So let's begin our next section and this is gonna grow exactly like I had to do on that last corner motif. The one that is kind of like that, that, that corner motif. <laughs> so I want you to switch back. So we're gonna go back to the very beginning. So I've ended here and like the typewriter I'm gonna come back to the, the beginning here. And we're going to attach. And let's begin. We're going to chain three, one, two, and three. And I want you to double crochet exactly where you've attached. So there will be two in there. And then I want you to double crochet into the first uh, to the next one that's available. So it's the middle one of the three. Just like there. And now chain one. So this is exactly how you were doing the corner motif. So the corner is always gonna have the same thing of three double crochet. Chain two, three double crochet. So the, there's your corner and we need to finish it off the same way that we've done the other corner motif. So we're gonna chain one. We're gonna come to the second one over and we're going to put in a single, or sorry, uh, one double crochet and then the last double crochet that's available there. You're gonna put two double crochet. And I need you to fasten this off and we're gonna move on to the next round and that's the last round to complete a triangle. That's how fast these are. Okay, so here is the triangle so far and see how it looks almost like it's not wanting to be a triangle. You just have to put faith in it that it's gonna work. So we're, we finished here. We're just gonna come back to the start here and let's create a slip knot. Again, using another fun color. And I'm gonna attach it to the top of the beginning. So I've attached it and I'm going to chain three. So one, two, and three. Keeping a hold of my straggler again. Coming back into the same spot that I've just joined at for another double crochet. And we wanna come into the second one over for another double crochet. So the first one has two, the next one is by itself and then this next one we leave empty and we're going to chain one and simply just come into the gapping space where have we seen this before, right? The corner motif, it's the same thing. Okay, and chain one. Coming into the corner itself, there's only one corner because this is a triangle. So there'd be three double crochet, chain two. Three double crochet. Okay, after you get that done, chain one. Now you just look for the next group of three. Look for this little space right there. And that's gonna be another three double crochet there. Chain one and then you come to the second one over and you put in one double crochet. Come to the very last one and put in two double crochet and that'll complete off doing one of these triangles. So now you've done that, just fasten off and just clean up your uh, tr uh, edges and then these are good to go and you need to do 20 of these in total. 
So that concludes today's video and it's up to you now to read the instructions on how to do the assembly just straight whip stitching together and basically they can just the flat edges go up against each other just like you see and there is a stitching diagram on how the motifs are working together and how they're to be placed and then you can read the instructions on how to do the border overall. You will notice that the triangles that when it comes to the edges that there is going to be filling it in so the edges of this entire uh, throw will actually be flat and then of course you have the middle squares that are on this side here and there is going to be a triangle missing here so that's where those triangles are filling in those gaps so that you don't have any empty spaces. So until next time it's been a pleasure to uh, teach you today on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and stay tuned for more free ideas and patterns. Until then we'll see ya.